A violent thug from Minnesota tried to cry about police brutality after a video went viral of his arrest. Now, the punk doesn't have a leg to stand on after the police chief wrecked his story with a truth bomb. Criminals are usually the dumbest folks in our society, and one man from Roseville, Minnesota recently proved that when he tried to say that police battered him during an arrest. At first, a viral video of the incident caused outrage among snowflakes who sided with the thug, but there wasn't much to say after Roseville Police Chief Rick Mathwig revealed what actually happened. According to Blue Lives Matter, the shocking incident took place on Tuesday, May 22, 2018, at a residence in Roseville, Minnesota. Mathwig came forward to defend his officers who put their own well-being at risk to put the suspect into custody. Force used by law enforcement is never pretty to look at, and Roseville police officers use it judiciously when taking someone into custody, Mathwig said in a statement published in a press release by the department on May 30. Detailed reports were written by the officers involved in this incident, and I previously reviewed them," he added. In the video, you saw two officers, one on each side of the male they were taking into custody. You can see the male subject's right arm is alongside his body and you also see the officer struggling to move the suspect's arm behind his back in order to apply handcuffs. The male subject uses his strength to defeat this. The other officer struck the upper right arm several times. The report indicates the officer did this in order to obtain compliance from the suspect and effect the arrest, the chief continued. The officer pauses in between the strikes to give the suspect enough time to comply. Sadly, the suspect does not comply until other officers arrived and with enough combined strength to finally overcome the suspect's active resistance. You do not see any strikes to the head of the suspect because officers were acting in compliance with the Roseville Police Department's use of force policy and training. They give measured responses to the active resistance of the suspect, Mathwig explained. The reason Mathwig decided to release details from the police report of this incident was to provide accurate information to counteract the public outrage from people who believe the nonsense being spread by the suspect and his family. Of course, none of this would have happened in the first place if the suspect would have behaved himself at home. According to local news source KSTP, emergency dispatchers in Ramsey County received several 911 calls reporting a domestic disturbance and one call came from a female who was asking the police to come out and remove a male subject. When two officers arrived at the residence, they found that a man and woman at the home were entangled and tried to separate them. During that altercation, police said the woman hit the man on the side of the head. The two officers were able to separate the man and woman before taking the man outside for questioning. When the officer attempted to place the man in handcuffs for safety reasons, the man refused and became combative. Both officers then engaged the man and used a taser gun in addition to a chemical spray which had no effect. The two officers finally took the suspect to the ground but were unable to get his arms and hands in a position to place him in handcuffs. At that point, the man's wife started filming the incident, making it look as if the police had brutalized him. Mathwig explained that the officers feared he was reaching for a weapon because he kept going for his waistband. The viral clip begins by showing the two officers with the suspect who is face down on the ground. 
They asked him to get down, he wouldn't get down, the woman filming the video said. The suspect could be seen struggling violently as the officers tried to put his hands behind his back. The woman filming yelled at the officers that the suspect had a spine injury. In my opinion, he should not have resisted so violently if he indeed had a spine injury. In an attempt to get his hand away from his waist area and gain control of his arms, officers performed several strikes to his shoulder area. The strike seemed to have minimal effect on the male, Mathwig explained in the press release. Why are you punching him? Why are you punching him? He got a spine injury, the woman yelled at the officers in the video. The suspect could be seen screaming and grunting before trying to communicate with the officers. The man told the officers he had a spine injury. This is when one of the officers broke it down for the suspect in terms he could understand. Well then you should have listened, the officer yelled at him. The two officers were able to gain control of the suspect's hands and hold him down until additional officers arrived. At one point the suspect looped his fingers around the front of his waistband to resist the officers. Are you getting all this? One woman who could not be seen on camera asked. The other woman responded that there were no black police officers present. How stupid are people these days? They want to call the police to come out and remove a combative man, and then they scream and cry when the police have to force the suspect into submission. When the officers finally subdued the suspect and arrested him, he was taken to a nearby hospital for treatment. During the ride, officers said that the suspect claimed he had seen a doctor earlier that day and he wanted to admit him for mental health concerns. The truth of the matter is that these officers did an outstanding job in using non-lethal force to subdue a very dangerous suspect. Anyone who thinks they did a bad job should put on a badge and try their job for a week.